You don't like messed up dependencies in your code base, do you? But sometimes workarounds are a necessary evil. And sometimes simply mistakes happen. Here's how I analyze and resolve such unwanted dependencies. One of my projects has grown quite a bit recently, so I thought it would be the right time to analyze whether the code dependencies still match the rules of the architecture, which are top level feature folders should be as independent from each other as possible, and features should only depend on the foundation folder which contains the shared code. A quick analysis of the code base shows there are some unwanted dependencies. The individual features are not yet fully independent, but we are working on this. More importantly, foundation seems to have a dependency to a particular feature, which is definitely a severe smell. Let's find out the root cause and how to resolve it. My favorite tool for such kind of dependency analysis is Planion Graphis, because it allows me to drill into different levels of dependencies without getting lost in the details of the source code. I start the analysis using the tool Visual Studio Project Dependencies, which loads and visualizes all project level dependencies. I select the folder containing the source code and click Create Graph. Each node represents a Visual Studio project and each edge represents a dependency between two Visual Studio projects. The nodes are clustered by the top level folders of the code base. Let's fold all clusters to get a high level overview. And this overview immediately reveals the major smell. There is a dependency from foundation to a feature called Build Failure Analysis. To find out the root cause of this dependency, we first need to find the projects causing this dependency. Therefore we select the foundation node and the build failure analysis node using Ctrl left mouse button click. And from the context menu we then choose remove all but selected. We now unfold the foundation cluster and then select the build failure analysis node including all sources. We again remove all nodes but the selected ones. We now also unfold the Build Failure Analysis cluster and we now select the projects from the Foundation cluster including their siblings. And one more time we remove all nodes but the selected ones. Let's relay out the graph. Now the graph shows all projects directly involved in the dependency smell we are analyzing. But we also need those projects depending on the two Foundation projects to get the full picture in the next step. Therefore we add the sources of each project in the foundation cluster. Now we need to unfold all clusters. Let's zoom into foundation again. And we select each project including its siblings. Now we remove all nodes but the selected ones. And this creates a graph containing all the projects relevant for the next level of the dependency analysis. So let's save that graph. In the next step we want to find out which class level dependencies cause those project level dependencies. For this we use the tool Package Dependency Graph. And I start with loading the graph saved in the previous step. For this I have to choose the dot extension and now I can load the file. This creates a so called spec file which defines a package for each cluster from the previous graph. The nodes from the previous graph are now interpreted as assemblies. Before we can load those assemblies we have to specify the assembly root, so the location where the assemblies can be found. As this code base still depends on the .NET framework, I need to change this property here to true. And I also have to change some extensions here from DLL to Excel. So let's quickly do this. And now I can click create graph. By default the generated package spec creates clusters per top level folder. For our analysis it seems to be more useful to have clusters per assembly, except for foundation because this is the focus of our analysis. So let's switch back to the package spec and quickly adapt it. On the package level we can specify an attribute called autoclusters and here we can give the value assembly. Let's quickly copy paste this to all the other packages except foundation. Ok now let's create the graph again. If we now fold all the clusters, we almost get the same graph as from the previous analysis except for foundation where both assemblies are now in one cluster. And each cluster now no longer contains Visual Studio projects but classes. In order to find out which classes in foundation are causing those unwanted dependencies we now unfold the foundation cluster. This shows us that the graph also contains nodes for compiler generated classes which are causing unnecessary noise for the next steps of the analysis. So let's open the filter dialog, choose ignore folding 
and create a filter to filter out all those nodes representing compiler generated classes. Let's close the dialog again and we can now focus on the relevant nodes. In order to find the classes causing the dependency from the foundation folder to the build failure analysis feature, we select each node from the build failure analysis feature including its sources. And this reveals three classes in foundation causing those dependencies. Before deciding how to resolve those dependencies, we have to consider also those classes depending on these classes from foundation. So we select those classes again including the sources. For the third class we can easily see that there are no other sources. And we again remove all nodes but the selected ones. From this graph we can easily see that the local db tfs work item writer class is actually only used by the build failure analysis feature. So this class doesn't need to be in foundation at all. Let's move it to the right place. And we immediately see how the graph changes and how also the dependencies on the project level change. From this graph we can also easily see that the other two classes are used by multiple features. So let's keep those in foundation for now. But still we need to resolve this unwanted dependency from foundation to the feature build failure analysis. So let's unfold the build failure analysis adapters cluster and check whether there is any code which could be moved to foundation instead. Let's zoom into this area of the graph by right click and drag. And already on the first glance it looks like there are three classes which could be moved. Let's use the select feature again to get a clearer picture. We select this node including the targets as well as this one. And we can see there are really only those three classes used from build failure analysis in foundation. But what would be the effect of moving these classes into foundation? Let's start with the interface and just move it and see how the edges in the graph change. Let's zoom in again and we can see there are now two new edges from the build failure analysis cluster to the foundation cluster, which is okay. And we have still dependencies left from foundation cluster to the build failure analysis cluster. So of course we also have to remove the other two classes. Let's clear the selection, select only those two and move those two nodes together into the foundation cluster. Now we fold all clusters to validate the dependencies on project level. And we can now easily see that foundation has no longer any invalid dependency to any feature. The only step left to be done is to either document the result of this analysis in a technical depth user story or to apply these refactoring steps to the codebase right away. Even so the graph based dependency analysis helped me to get an overview on the dependencies of the entire codebase quickly and also it helped me to resolve unwanted dependencies fast. Wouldn't it even be better to avoid invalid dependencies in the first place? And one great way to achieve this you will learn in this video.